அரசியலில் முழு வெற்றி பெற பியூர் பாலிடிக்ஸ் பயிற்சி பட்டறை நேரடி மற்றும் இணைய வழி அட்மிஷன் கிளோசஸ் ஆன் பிப்ரவரி டுவெண்ட்டி வரலாற்று வாய்ப்பை தவறவிடாதீர்கள் Shankar, India has more of a um, multiple choice mindset. Is, w- would, that be, would that be right? Um, from non-alignment to, I think you may have called it or somebody else called it, all alignment. So you can pick and choose alliances, but you can also pick and choose topics. On Russia, for example, you still buy uh, Russian oil. Uh, is, that, is that okay with your... Uh, counterpart from the US everything is your your relationship is fine you can do whatever you want whenever you want uh, <laughs> okay first of all uh, I mean, you're sitting next to each other no no so. first of all uh, delighted uh, to be here uh, and i couldn't find a better set of people to be with on the stage uh, so thank you for whoever put us all together uh, your question uh, do we have multiple options answer is yes Uh, is that a problem? Why should it be a problem? If I'm smart enough to have multiple options, you should be admiring me. You know, you shouldn't be criticizing. <laughs> Now, is, is that a problem for other people? I don't think so. I don't think so, certainly in this case uh, and in that case. Because, look, uh, we try to explain what are the different pulls and pressures which countries have. And uh, it's very hard to have a unidimensional relationship. Now, again, different countries and different relationships have different histories. If I were to look, say, between the US and Germany, uh, it is rooted, you know, there's an alliance uh, nature to it. Uh, there's a certain uh, history on which that relationship is grounded. In our case, it's very different. So uh, I don't want you to even inadvertently uh, give the impression that we are purely and you know unsentimentally transactional we are not uh, you know we get along with people we believe in things we share things we agree on some things but uh, you know there are times when uh, you know when you're located in different places have different levels of development uh, different uh, uh, experiences all of that uh, gets into it. So life is complicated, life is differentiated. And I think it's very important today not to reduce the entire complexity of our world into very sweeping propositions. Yeah. I think that era is today behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I agree very much with what Tony said, which is uh, good partners provide choices. Smart partners take some of those choices. Uh, but sometimes there will be choices on which you say, well, you know, I think I'll pass up on that one. It's a very good point, um, which brings me to uh, the BRICS and the rise of middle powers, because that is one of, uh, of the shifts that we see today. Do, to what extent do you think that that is a challenge to the West? Or maybe that can be sort of the bridge, especially in a world where we will see continued competition between the US and China. And I'm going to ask Minister Jai Shankar okay. first, and, but I'd love for both of you to come no, as well. I, I thought maybe the BRICS one, you wanted the US. I, after you, Jai, please. Uh, but uh, look, uh, I, again, I think it's important to go back to how it began. The BRICS started in an era where Western dominance was very strong. Uh, the premier gathering of the world was the G7. And you had a number of significant powers in the world uh, who felt that, well, they were not part of the G7, but uh, maybe they also uh, brought value to the table by sitting and discussing with others. So in a sense, uh, you had a collection of these countries, it was originally four, uh, South Africa joined later. Uh, and uh, uh, if, you know, if you look at it, it's a very interesting group because it's uh, geographically as disparate as it can be. Uh, yet it is bound by the fact that 
these discussions we've had over uh, a decade and a half have been very useful for all of us. Now, like any product, you test it in the market at some point. We tested it last year and asked people, so how many of you want to join BRICS? And we got almost 30 countries who were willing to join BRICS. So clearly, if 30 countries saw value in it, there must be something good we've done. Uh, so I, I think it's important today uh, to make a distinction being, between being non-West and anti-West. Mm -hmm. I would certainly characterize India as a country uh, which is non-West, but which has an extremely strong relationship with Western countries getting better by the day. Not everybody else necessarily in that grouping might qualify for that description, uh, but uh, the, the contribution the BRICS has made, you know, if one looks at the G7 and how it evolved into the G20, I think in a way those additional 13 members who came into its bigger grouping, uh, five of them are BRICS members. The fact that there was another group which was meeting regularly and discussing and debating, I think certainly was a input into the expansion of the G70, uh, G7 into the G G20. So I think we did a service to the world. Minister, yeah. uh, I can what is, what is the, the view from, uh, from India? What would you, if, if you had uh, some advice for your colleagues, what would you, be t what would you tell them? Well, I don't have advice for my colleagues, though I particularly, I think all of us follow the enormous efforts which Tony is putting in right now. Uh, but uh, look, the way we look at it, uh, there are different dimensions, different elements to this. Number one, we must be clear that what happened on October 7th was terrorism. No caveats, no justification, no explanation. It was terrorism. Number two, uh, as Israel responds, it is important that Israel should be, should have been uh, very mindful of civilian casualties, uh, that uh, it has an obligation to observe international humanitarian law. Uh, number three, uh, the return of hostages is today imperative. Uh, number four, there is a need for a humanitarian corridor, a sustainable humanitarian corridor to provide relief. And eventually, there has to be a, a permanent fix, a long-term fix, otherwise we're going to see a recurrence. And I think today, uh, certainly India has long uh, believed in a two-state solution. We have uh, maintained that position for many decades. And I think today, many more countries in the world uh, today feel uh, not just that the two-state solution is necessary, but it is more urgent uh, than it was before. Inshallah, as they would say in the Middle East. So uh, I'll just take one, a minute. One minute, uh, yes. I think a very large number of countries, especially of the Global South, believe that terrorism shouldn't be countenanced or justified, but they equally strongly believe that a two-state solution should not be delayed. These are not choices. These are both musts, and unless we are able to address both these issues, uh, we are not going to really uh, solve the problem.